Hello team, this is Adrian Iliasio and I'm an engineer with the DevNet team. So in this part of the course, we'll go over the vManage REST API. But before we get to that, I'd like to go over a quick recap of what we've accomplished so far. So in the previous course, you've seen the SD-WAN architecture, how it evolved from the WAN circuits of the past and what are the advantages that it brings. We've also had a, a look at the Cisco SD-WAN solution for this and you've seen all the components and how they interact with each other how the v edges interact with the v smart v bond and v manage and how all the components uh, are making part of one solution and what the advantages are so having said that let's go and look at what is an api so an api stands for application programming interface and in this case it's really in the name um, an API is an interface, a programming interface into a specific application. So it consists of a set of rules describing how one application interacts with another one and the mechanisms and the rules that govern this interaction. So to give you an analogy and an example of this, think of it as the power grid out there that we're using every day. So the power grid Think of it as kind of the application and the power outlets that you have throughout your house are your point of contact, your point of interaction with this application, with the power grid, with, with the power network, right? So those are power outlets. They have specific rules. There's a specific voltage coming out of them uh, and a specific current. So pretty much in a similar fashion, we have the APIs for applications in which there's a certain set of rules that govern this interaction and uh, how it's done. So there's different types of APIs out there, different models. Um, REST, the one that we're talking about in this course, it stands for representational state transfer, is a stateless API. Communication is over HTTP or over HTTPS and uses common HTTP verbs like get to get data, post to create new data, put to update, and then delete the delete data. And the data that is being returned is in different formats, could be XML, JSON, text, depends on how you specify this in the content headers. So another analogy that I can um, use here is think of your browsing the internet, going to uh, your favorite search engine or checking your email, is the verbs and the traffic over HTTP that's being used in those transactions are being used and has been migrated to interact with APIs and applications. So we're taking advantage of the simplicity of the architecture to interact with applications over the network. So examples of other APIs that are out there and they've been throughout the years are SOAP is another example of uh, API architecture that's out there. There's Java APIs, there's RPC based remote procedure call APIs. So there's different sets and architectures and technologies um, out there that are available. The rest one we found is the most commonly used because it's easy to implement it's easy to understand, and there's a lot of libraries out there that help us to interact with, uh, with REST APIs so that we don't have to rewrite all the code from scratch. So how does it work? We have here a client uh, that makes a request, right? It could be one of the verbs that we were mentioning, get, get data, post to create data, delete, or put, put to change or update data. And there's an API service out there on the network that is listening for these requests. So you need to specify a URL or a resource or an endpoint, we call it. So it's pretty much the same thing, resource or endpoint, that you access over the network. And this is where your API service is running. API service, based on the resource that you are going to, is going to do something and it's going to return a response in different formats, like you were saying. Could be JSON, XML, text. And this usually is specified with the content type header in your request. 
and then you get back the response and the client does an action based on that response, right? So in case you just want to find out the temperature at your location, you can do an API call to an API that provides temperature values for uh, cities throughout the US or throughout the world. Um, another example that I like to use here is think of Yelp and applications similar to Yelp, right? So there's a user, we have the user here, and they have a mobile phone, and they're trying to figure out what restaurants um, are around there where they are specifically. So they would use the GPS coordinates from the phone to figure out, okay, I'm at latitude and longitude, X and Y, right? So with that, you can ask after that the location API, hey, I mean this coordinates, where am I actually? What's the city or what's the street? What's my exact location where I am? They would make a request to a location API, right? And there's several out there. Google provides location API, Uber. There's a lot of um, location API providers out there. Some of them are free. Some of them charge a certain amount of um, money for, you, for them to provide this information to you. But basically, you make a request, and they send you a response. OK, based on these coordinates, I see that uh, you're on Tasman Street, Building L uh, is the Cisco campus, right? So then the application would have a database. It's like, oh, OK, so this is the location. We have these five restaurants in this area. And people that have been uh, before there, they have made recommendations or not, and they've commented on this. So if you're an application like Yelp or any other application that does that type of, um, uh, displays that type of information, you could build your own location API from scratch, which would take time, resources, or you could interact and use third-party APIs provided by other vendors. So that's how the economy today start evolving into using different APIs and different API providers so that I don't have to build everything from scratch. I can just take advantage of different resources provided by different uh, API companies and, and API providers out there. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And that's, that's all I had to cover in this. So a quick recap of what we've done so far. We've seen what an API is. We've seen REST API, what it is, uh, and how it works. And then we've gave you a couple of examples of, OK, the power grid uh, and the power outlet analogy, the, um, also the Yelp uh, analogy. And yeah, hopefully this helps everybody. And uh, we'll see you on the next course, which is going to be around Accessing vManage. Thanks, everybody.